Hey, good morning, guys. Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Um, this one is going to have a whole heap of broad information. Um, the key thing, it's going to be related around suspension, and we're looking at a real-world setup here, and it's got quite a lot of modifications, really, so we'll probably run through that. But, you know, we're trying to get the balance right. You know, some people want short get-to-the-point video. Some people want long and detailed every last bit. So, you know, we're trying to have a balance. There'll be some longer ones, some shorter ones. Now, the key thing here, this is, as I said, got to do with suspension, struts, coil springs. Um, basically, what I do is, whatever questions I get in a text message, and I prefer not to get, you know, questions in a text message, I prefer the questions to be on our Facebook groups, I look at those questions and I quite often don't answer because it may be a matter of opinion and of course the group's open to um, opinions and discussion but obviously where there can be a problem is when someone puts some information out there or maybe perhaps an opinion I mean if it's an opinion firstly you know back to basics back to was it primary school truth true or false and is it a fact or is it an opinion so let's just quickly say you know the difference between an opinion you know what an opinion is, don't you? You know, that's where, you know, it doesn't matter either way. It's just, oh, you know, I like a white car better. Oh, no, I like red. Well, it's just a matter of opinion. There's no fact there. Or it's a fact that you like white better and I like red better or vice versa. But one's not better than the other. Now, a fact is, for example, that car's white. No, it's not. It's red. No, it's white. It's No, there's no point arguing. But if it's white, it's white. It's just like a spade's a spade, and I call a spade a spade. Now, obviously, when somebody posts some information on one of our groups, now, it, I don't like it when it's on another group, right? But it's kind of none of my business. As you know, if I've started groups, pages, and channels and stuff, I try and keep the information accurate, authentic, genuine as possible, and that's why everybody loves it. So when somebody posts on one of our groups and the information is completely wrong, I've got to try and work out the best way without wasting too much time, hours and hours, trying not to get in an argument. Of course, no name calling, no you're an idiot, you know, whatever, but just getting to the facts. Now, and what you've got to be careful of, words are words. That's why I prefer the videos because you can get a bit of tone of voice with it. Um, you're not going to get facial expression unless you're in the VIP group. We don't really care about that. It's not about me. It's about, we're, we're looking at these things here at the moment, but, um, and there's a number of problems here really. Uh, this is not my setup or what I'd recommend in so many ways. We'll get to that But the most important part of the information in this group I suppose is the first thing I just want to try and briefly explain What's happening with springs and struts and when you compress them and mount them in that strut there, so <coughs> You have to excuse me. I got a bit of a tickle in the throat this morning <coughs> Might have to get COVID-19 tested No, no, it's it's fine, but um yeah, it's just the morning thing. Allergy. It's crazy. Just ongoing. Anyway, basically, what's happening here is, for those that are not sure, not aware, what is a strut? A strut is this piece here that bolts at the bottom. It goes up. It's the shock absorber, effectively, but it's a different design. It's called a strut because the person that invented it, you know, that's what it is, right? So it's got a seat on the bottom, sometimes referred to as coil overs because as you can see the coil goes over it okay um, pretty straight that's a really good description because it you know when you use a word to describe something that's what it is oh yeah a coil over that must be that because the coil goes over it oh pass me the coil over yeah no problem pass me the strut uh strut and you know they start dancing around strut your stuff <laughs> not really so um <clears throat> basically with the struts let's say for example this is a toyota prado They've got a standard spring seat height, right? You know, let's just say that's it right there. Now you've got the OEM, the manufacturer one, and all the aftermarket ones are or should be the same height. Now some of them are adjustable, but most of them are fixed height, right, until recently. Um, so there's a standard height, and if they're adjustable, you set them at a standard height, and we'll get more into what happens when you change the standard height later in the video, or perhaps in other videos, because, you know, trying to keep it short. Um, so understand that is the spring seat height and that's it it's fixed it's same on all struts and shockers doesn't make any difference unless they've made a mistake and i can tell you that monroe at one point <coughs> excuse me i know you hate that um 
they made a mistake and they were a few mil out, but that wasn't planned. It was a mistake and they changed it. They said, yep, you're right, because I pointed out the fact that they were wrong. They were about four mil out. And they went, oh, yeah, nah. And then they checked it and they came back and said, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks for that. So they made a little adjustment. That's why some cars were about eight mil higher than they should have been. It's like, what's going on here? That's weird. Been doing this for decades with this spring with these cars and it's 10 nearly 10 mil higher well what's going on and you start taking measurements and you work these things out and you can quite confidently go to manufacturer and say hey guess what you've made a mistake some listen some don't right and i suppose once they get to know you they listen a bit more so perhaps they should be listening anyway so we understand that is the strut right that is the strut that is the spring seat height right there okay now the coil spring, you know what the coil spring is? This is this thing that goes around like that, coil spring. Now, coil springs are pretty simple. There's a couple of aspects to this video. One is what's gonna happen when we compress that coil spring between the seat of the strut at the bottom and the top hat or strut top, whatever you wanna call it, right? The piece that goes on top. You've seen, you know what I'm talking about or you've seen my other videos. If you haven't, go and watch all the uh, videos on suspension and there'll be more so that's why you subscribe and turn that bell on because there's more coming your way and we're going to explain it in detail so if you're in a hurry thanks for watching we're going to keep going with the video um, what happens is obviously the spring seat always remains the spring seat it's not going to change right and what's going on up the top there when you've got it on a spring compressor right let's say you've got the we've got the Brannock 7400 mounted on the wall we compress the spring from the bottom to the top. It compresses the spring down. You've got to be careful to do it nice and evenly and not damage the spring. That's why it's important to do that. Are you getting distracted like me? I just keep seeing that aftermarket arm and ball joint hitting on that spring there. and It's just so distracting, you know. And I'm also looking at the bushes that are chopped out here. You can work out what brand they are. We're not going there. They're red. They've got a hex shape at the bottom there and whatever, right? You know, and it's not the first time we've seen... Those red ones with that bush, and there's other brands of red ones that do that too. You know, there's so many brands of suspension that do that, but uh, there's two that I know, and one's OEM, that don't do that. So anyway, but we won't go there yet, maybe later, in other videos perhaps. So when you compress that spring down to put it under the top hat, you are compressing it, okay? And of course, the more you compress it, it is harder to compress. Once you fit the top hat or the, you know, strut top and do up that nut to the standard height and release the spring uh, pressure with a spring compressor, release that spring pressure with a spring compressor, yes, I can say it. If I take enough time to say things clearly, I can. The problem is sometimes I'm talking fast because some people want fast videos and then I, and I spit out the wrong words and sorry for the mistakes I've made where I go, oh, that's a, you know, that's a 19 mil and it's a 21 or, you know, so I know what it is. I just spit out the wrong number sometimes, you know, so always check your torque specifications and your sizes. Just trying to help. Usually it's right 99% of the time, but every now and then we have a little um, brain fart, someone said it was. But um, so when you compress it in the strut, the, the heavier the spring or the longer the spring, the more you're going to have to compress it, okay? What you do compressing that spring and putting it between inside that strut has got that's temporary it's temporary it's only while it's on the bench in the spring compressor once it's in the vehicle right here and on the ground so it's relevant while it's in the air like this okay but as soon as the weight of the vehicle's on the ground it's completely irrelevant it doesn't check the change the ride the handling the spring rate anything whatsoever and that's fairly obvious because the whole weight of the vehicle at the front is taken by that strut, all right? The spring, the bottom of the spring is on the strut. So basically everything that's sprung on the front of the vehicle, so there's unsprung weight and there's sprung rate. Unsprung weight, for example, see, so we're gonna go a little bit further. This is where the information just kicks in. Can't help myself. Maybe you can't quite see it in the picture, but just here is the lower control arm. That's unsprung weight. So we should do a test. You tell me, is this sprung or unsprung? So we've got a drive shaft there, right? There's a drive shaft, right? Just behind that, just there where my, you know, not this, behind here, drive shaft, right? Is that sprung or unsprung? Well, if you said unsprung, you're correct, okay? Because it is below the spring, it's unsprung. Um, well, it's kind of a bit of both because at the wheel end it's unsprung, but once you put it into the diff 
the diff side of the car sprung. So it's kind of 50-50. So was that a trick one? Well, it even nearly tricked me. This is what I mean. It is, I understand it's quite difficult for most people to understand all these components and the way they work. I don't expect people to understand them all. A lot of people do understand, you know, but there's a lot of people that don't and anything in between, I completely understand that. That's why I try and explain things in detail. And it's really important that we put the right information out there so people are not just, you know, because if you taught the wrong thing, mate, you know, if the teacher told you two plus two equals six and you believe that and you practice that for years and you're going around, it's going to cause problems for you big time, right? Simple things cause big problems, okay? And this, I don't know, maybe it's not a, a big deal at all, but it is clearly wrong if someone's saying that, you know, you've got to have a match set of shockers and coils was one thing. And that's, that's arguable. Maybe it's a matter of opinion. We can get into that later. Not a big deal as much as... When you compress it in there, depends what spring you use, the tighter it's compressed changes the spring rate. That is completely wrong. Completely and utterly wrong, wrong information, okay? And as nicely as I could say it, I was trying to say, can you, you know, can you please explain what you mean by that? And when someone if you know tries to explain something, they're gonna figure it out themselves. They're gonna go, actually, you know, yeah, you know. And then when I say, I clearly wrote. The, t the strut top, the weight of the car coming on that strut top compresses it even further and therefore that spring is between that spring seat and that strut top which is the weight of the car. It's got nothing to do with what was compressed before, right? You could, you know, whatever you like, you take the weight off. If you take the nut off the middle of that um, strut there, the car's just going to keep going up and take all the weight off the spring till it's completely off and then you put it back on again, it's going to come down. So it's got absolutely, and I hope from just this little demonstration, most people, the layman, can understand what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter what you do, compressing that spring in there. Um, so I'm not sure, so, you know, a little bit of drama for a minute. Because um, this was on Oz Prado crew last night, so this is going to be a reasonably fresh video. So we won't use last names, you know, but if you're on Oz Prado crew or you want to have a look, look, I'm open to feedback, please send me a text message to the phone if look you know I, I i've read over it i try and put myself in the other person's position i don't think there was anything um really combative or attacking it was i don't know if it was um you know i was asking questions you know what i mean so um trying to get the information please explain but anyway let's have a look through i'll just read it to you right so jonathan came along and wrote a post saying dual battery steel front bar winch install pedis has sagged now let's just quickly touch on sagged. Sagged is when a spring's damaged, okay? So let's say the spring's meant to be 400 mil long. You put it in, you use it in the vehicle, whatever amount of time later, the vehicle's heaps lower. You take it out, you put it on the bench, you measure it. If it's no longer 400, if it's 380, then it's sagged, okay? And as far as I know, most spring manufacturers will replace that spring because it's generally a small problem. Springs don't sag that much. And I'm confident if I had a sag spring from Dobinson's, they would, I'm pretty sure they've got a lifetime warranty and I am so confident, I'm going to say, they're going to replace a genuine sagged coil spring and if you've got a Prado and you've got the kit off me and you've got a genuine sagged coil spring, um, I'll give you a five year warranty myself. So you return the coil to me and I'll measure it and if it's that part number, this is the problem, they've got to have the original tags on them still so we can see the part number. If it's not what it's meant to be within about five mil, I'm going to replace it, five year warranty, there you go. But I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure they give a, a, a unlimited... So, the difference between sagged and you're not happy with your height or pick the wrong spring. Let's not use the word sagged when it's not sagged, okay? You know what I mean? Like, just careful how you use it. Let's say uh, the vehicle has dropped lower than what I'm happy with, or the vehicle's dropped to a 30 mil or 20 mil lift. Oh, I really wanted 50 type thing. Let's talk like that. Um, you know, possibly it's a wrong spring, unless you've taken the spring out and measured it, it's a wrong spring selection. You've picked the wrong one, someone who's given you the advice has given you the advice on the wrong one. That's why it pays to deal with someone that's really experienced in doing lots of the same vehicle for many years, okay? And hopefully someone that's also got a brain, so they've been doing the right thing for many years. Now, I can't guarantee I'm going to get it right, but I can tell you one thing. It's going to be usually within about 10 mil either way, and I say that because every vehicle's different. 
The spring increments quite often are seven, eight, and 10 mil difference. And what happens at the front coil is double at the wheel. So it is very difficult to go, I'm gonna give you a 50 mil lift. No, I'm gonna give you 40 to 60, or I'm gonna give you 30 to 50. Probably you're gonna aim for about 40 at the front. You know, I've said this before in other videos. So not to get too much off topic. Okay, so Pedders has sagged. What suspension will hold this weight for a two inch lift? just want to replace the front at this stage so totally understand so a bit more information please always provide the vehicle details that you haven't said if it's a 120 or a 150 um, i've asked the question no reply at this stage um, if you just want height you need to tell us how old the suspension is because i would suggest just coil springs right you only need to replace the springs if you if it's about height if these units are still okay they could be six months a year old i don't know so i asked that question as well um, but if you provide the information up front, we don't have to ask that question. It's a much quicker process because by leaving it short and open, you get lots of different answers and it really confuses things anyway. So moving down, Jason says he's got Bill Steen and King Springs. No problem. Everyone can have their opinion, whatever. I wrote Dobson coil hold up. No problem. Short and sweet because it does. We've used them for decades. No problem. King Springs, that's what we're looking at here. They probably do the same thing too, but maybe not because there's a giant strut spacer up the top there so maybe they don't you know what i mean depends again what spring you select we use dobinson's because it confuses things too much when you change from one brand of spring to the other if you know what i mean you know this one that one we yeah. now let's just we just use one we like it there's other reasons we've explained in other videos we like the way dobinson's do their coils okay so going down um okay stuart came along and he said it's a bit confusing right I'll bet most springs that are rated for the job, and he's got a picture of a man with arms crossed, just make sure your coils are matched to the struts. Spring perch heights will vary with the results, not always as intended. So I'm, I'm not sure what he meant exactly there. I got a taste of it, but the OP was also confused. That's the original poster was also, he said it made no sense. Um, I'll bet most springs that are rated for the job yeah, I don't know. Look, you've got to be careful. I don't, again, I don't want to be hanging on ARB, but sometimes some of their talk and marketing, the way they roll, you know, it's a bit of a, sometimes it's a bit of a brainwashing thing as well, you know? You know, there's a lot of, they always say, I notice this, whether it's in stores, oh, it got to be a match set, got to be a match set. We'll get to that later. That's kind of a matter of opinion and a bit of a rumor, you know, that's sort of been spread around. But um, so with that, I'm like, I'm watching, I'm going, well, hang on. Um, and now my internet's not gonna work, so that's that's painful, so give us a sec, because I'm trying to go to the next page and I've got no Wi-Fi. Hang on a sec. Look, anyway, let, let's get on with it. Until the next interruption, uh, the Wi-Fi stopped working, so now I've switched over to the phone on the 4G, and we'll just read through this, because there's some comments that open up questions and where information's required, so. We'll just go from the start. Stuart comes along, he says, I'll bet most springs that are rated for the job, men with arms in the air actually, just make sure your coils are matched to the strut. Spring perch heights will vary with the results, not always as intended. To completely don't know what he means. Jonathan said, quoted him and said, I didn't understand any of that, haha. -ha. Is 50 to 100 kilo rated about the max on the front suspension? Without picking on Jonathan, obviously, this is why he's asking questions because he doesn't really um, understand much about suspension at all, which is why I do videos and try and help educate everyone so they can understand a bit better and uh, make the right decisions. Then Stuart says, Jonathan, there's many ways to make suspensions work in, you know, uh, inverted commas, what do you call it? Um, but you have to make sure your shop people are in agreement with your spring people. I disagree. <laughs> anyway. Um, spring heights of the same rate, but changing the height by five, five millimeter change the effect of your spring tension. So here you go. This is where he's saying spring heights of the same rate, heights of the same rate, spring heights of the same rate. Again, it doesn't make sense. Spring heights of the same rate, but changing the height, hang on, spring heights of the same, how do you have a, a rate that's the same height? Okay. Anyway, but change, it doesn't really matter, right? But but changing the height off, I'm going to change the effective spring tension. So he's saying that 
changing the height of the spring, the length of the spring changes the spring tension, and that's what we've demonstrated here. Doesn't matter if you change the length of it, it's just gonna, this is the base, if the length's longer, it's gonna push the car up higher. It doesn't change the tension here. The tension here is set with the weight of the vehicle at the top. It's only temporary what you've done on the bench or on the wall with the spring compressor. Anyway, reading on, change the effective spring tension when they are fitted into the same compressed strut. Sorry guys, I needed a, a break just to try and read and understand this myself, right? By changing the height of the spring seat along the strut, you can see how this will change the spring rate when installed. I've explained how compressing it on the bench doesn't change the spring rate here because it's the weight of the car, right? It's so confusing. Anyway, anyway, next one. Example. When you click your pen down, it's easier at the top than when you have the button pressed fully down. I don't understand that. When you click your pen down, which pen you got a picture, when you click it down, it's easier at the top. I don't get that either. Um, front axle loads will be in your owner's manual, probably, yeah. I work for ARB and happy to explain PM me if you want to talk about it. That's nice. Um, Jonathan says, as I'm buying just the front, better to buy from the same manufacturer. So this is where, you know, Stuart's basically said, you know, because of the match set, well, you don't have to do that. So what I'm trying to say is if you've got a KYB strut and you've got king springs and you think they're sagged or they're too low, maybe you just need a longer king spring or you could put a Dominson spring, whatever. Now, the whole match set talk, I'll just briefly touch on that. We'll get more into it later. You'd have to have your strut valving a long way out or your spring a long way out for there to be a problem, okay? Generally, they shouldn't be that dissimilar to each other the springs and the shockers and therefore you could interchange most of them and in most cases they're going to work together so I disagree with the match set thing but that's a matter of opinion if you like it is something that ARB says a lot and that's probably because they sell springs and struts um, you know so do other places as well you know uh, the whole match set I've seen it you know there's a number of manufacturers that use uh, you know let's put to put it simple the spring does a completely separate job to the strut, okay? Now, selecting the right spring here is a matter of the weight of the vehicle, you know, the accessories you've got there. You've got to get the right spring, and then you've got to have the right strut. Now, the strut's job is to control the spring from bouncing, and the valving inside there on both compression and rebound varies from one manufacturer to the, to the next. And... It doesn't really matter. It all depends what driving you're doing. So there's so many variables with that strut, but you can change to a lot of different struts with the same spring, okay? Once you've got your spring right here, you don't need to change it. That's got to do with your height, mainly, you know, because they're not that, again, not that different to each other. But the strut depends what conditions you're using it in. If you want comfortable or if you want firm control, if you're on road, you know, like a race car type handling on a smooth surface, you want nice tight control on both compression and rebound. But if you're bouncing around on sand dunes or some corrugations, you need the suspension to come down quickly to fill that hole and up quickly and down quickly. So, you know, that's where it varies a lot and that's where it's hard to get a happy middle point with a strut. And that's the most important part. Not that it's somehow matched to a coil. It doesn't have to match the coil. There's nothing to match. It's it's like saying I'm going to match this set of pads to this tire. It's kind of just like that, really. But anyway, doesn't matter. You know, that's kind of a matter of opinion, and that we hadn't even got to that yet. Trying to discuss the point he's trying to make of how compressing this spring. So let me just read on. Stuart says to Jonathan, "You need to match the springs to the struts at the very minimum." Okay, so we just talked about that. Then, that's where I put my first comment. Stuart, please tell us how the temporary install on struts has any permanent effect once fitted to the vehicle? Question mark. I thought that was a pretty quick question, not, not aggressive in any way. And then I wrote in the same reply, also, what if shocks and coils are not matched? Because I want to know well, about this matching thing. So give me an example, please, of, you know, if something's not matched. 
what the problem's going to be because you'll have a hard time. I can give you some examples, but they'd be extreme examples you're not going to find buying fairly standard springs made by King Springs or Dobinsons for these vehicles and any of the main suspension strut manufacturers you could put in with any of those springs and you're not going to see any issues. It'd have to be on the very outside. Like, for example, let's say we uh, put a really soft spring on a really heavy vehicle. Well, your you, height's going to be wrong anyway, so it's not going to work out because it's going to be too low. But let's just pretend for a minute that there was a really soft spring, right? And then because it was really bouncy and soft and long to get the height, then you put this really tightly valved strut in there to compensate for the bounciness of the spring. You might get a harsh ride because of the valving controlling, not the spring. Um, so that's where those variables come in. But like I said, that's on the very outside. You'd have to have gone and selected some completely wrong coil or some El Cheapo, even some El Cheapo brand suspension you get off eBay is going to be fine kind of thing. It's not going to cause these sorts of problems in general. Anyway, let's keep reading through this because I'm just trying to get if there's any information questions out there we need to clear up. Um, so Stuart says... Stuart speaking to me, Anthony, when people use, in brackets, just an example, one brand of coils on another brand of struts, fitted length of the coil may not be as intended. Fitted length of the coil, fitted length, doesn't change. Anyway, may not be as intended. And as such, the ride height and intended behavior of a vehicle is unacceptable. So, when people use one brand of coils, and another, so if you use one brand of coils, it doesn't matter what brands you use. The height of the vehicle is going to be exactly what spring you select. It's got nothing to do with the strut because it's a set seat height on those struts. Um, may not fitted length of the coil may not be as intended. It doesn't really matter what the fitted length of the coil is because it's as I've demonstrated, it's only temporary. Um, anyway, my reply. So here's post. It's just stuff that doesn't make sense, but. We're always going to stay cool, be nice, calm, and all that. No problem. There's nothing to get excited about. It's just discussion. Okay, my reply, Stuart. How does that work when the weight of the vehicle is what compresses the coil? So, a simple question. So, he said that, you know, it matters. And I said, how does it work when the weight of the vehicle, as demonstrated, it compresses the coil? How does that work? Next paragraph in the same reply. Installation on the coil over is only temporary. As soon as the car hits the ground, the weight of the vehicle is the new load to the coil, as you can see, right, as demonstrated here. As soon as this hits the ground, that coil is going to compress more, right? We may even demonstrate it later in this video. Next reply, Stuart says, Anthony, if the coil, well, it says cool, but he's meant to say coil, obviously. He's probably talking to the phone partly like what I do, with no uh, punctuation or anything and wrong words coming in and all that sort of thing. So he says, Anthony, if the coil seat is lower and you fit a short spring, the car will be lower. Of course it will be. If you put the seat on an adjustable seat lower and fit a shorter spring, it'll be lower. Totally agree with that. Naturally, that's obvious. If you fit a long spring, right, a longer spring and the seat's higher, he says, if you fit a long spring and the seat is higher, the shock body, the car will be higher. Yeah, we know that. That's obvious. Yeah, totally, totally get that. Then I wrote... Stuart, the spring seats are the same height. So we're basically saying, keep it simple, all right? The seats are all at the same height. We're not moving any seats. Most struts are at the same height. Then I wrote, what I'd like, please, is an explanation of how temporary compression of the coil in the strut changes the spring rate in any way whatsoever, assuming all strut seats are at the same position as they are. Just a simple question. No reply. Next post, obviously I'm reading it, trying to figure out what he's trying to get at and, you know, making sure, am I misunderstanding something, making sure, you know. Right? Then I wrote, obviously if the spring seats are lower or coils are shorter, the vehicle will be lower. That's what he said, right? Obviously, if the spring seats are higher or the spring is longer, it will be higher. You're talking about changing the spring rate by how it's compressed in an installation of a strut. But as soon as the vehicle hits the ground, the weight of the vehicle is all the compression of the coil. It's got nothing to do with the assembly. So I'm trying to explain, as I've already explained, you know, uh, yeah, no need to explain it again. I just read it. His reply. Anthony, like the Bilsteins and BP-51s, again, ARB stuff, 
and Bilstein talk, right? Compress. Anthony, like the Bilsteins and BP51s do, compress the spring more, squeezes the spring more, right? So basically by adjusting the seat or whatever, they squeeze the spring more, he's saying. So you're squeezing the spring. It now takes more weight to combine to... To... So let me get it right. It now takes more weight to begin compressing that spring. It's compressible. Agreed. It does take more to start compressing it. That part we can agree on. In doing so, you change the ride height. Negative. That's the part that's incorrect. So by compressing it more, certainly it takes more pressure to compress it more, but the weight of the vehicle is still more. Otherwise, you'd put the car on the ground and the spring would be still fully extended and the spring wouldn't compress at all, right? When the car hits the ground, the spring is compressing, right? So anyway, I'm just trying to explain my reply. Stuart Cotton. Oh, sorry. I'll doesn't matter anyway, right? Stuart, once you understand or teach me about this change in spring tension, I quote, because that's his words used, we can move on to exactly what you mean about match coils and shocks. So I'm still waiting for the reply. He's not very uh, responsive or explanatory with his... Expl and you can't explain something that doesn't happen, I suppose. But look, I think he gave up. And this is where, you know, the whole text writing things so you maybe you're right guys maybe just stick to youtube and listening to the information on the videos and don't join the groups because you know this doesn't happen often but it can go like this right and it's all cool and then jonathan chimes in and said original poster and says hi gents please don't have an argument both opinions are appreciated now it's not an argument when you're dealing with facts okay and we're not arguing i'm asking for the explanation while explaining how basically what gee, I'll get the names mixed up who we've got Jonathan and Stuart what Stuart's saying is clearly wrong I've demonstrated here and I I wrote it last night which is it's hard to explain and that's why I'm doing this video now because obviously it's important that if information has been put out there in previous years that you know how you compress this spring matters it's completely wrong guys so that's what we do we put the right information out there okay certainly not looking to be combative or anything it's just if you, the information's there, you've got to ask the question. You've somehow got to try and extract that please explain information out so that we can just correct the information. Because people, if we leave it there, people are going to read it for days, weeks, months, and years to come and think that it's just wrong information. Now, you've heard about the fake news on Facebook and all that. Well, we don't want to have fake news on any groups we've got anything to do with, um, you know, running and managing. Um, we've got a number of admins in place there. You know, it's not a about me type group. It's, you know, whatever. We've got a number of people there with a similar, you know, know the way we're all. Keep it nice. No swearing. If you do swear, you, you'll get removed. You agree to this when you join by answering the questions. So it makes it a pretty nice place. Um, anyway, moving on. So then, um, then I said to... Uh, I said to Stuart, compressing the spring on the strut doesn't change the ride height or the spring rate. Changing the spring seat height changes the height of the vehicle. It's compressed by the weight of the vehicle. Again, I'm stating the fact. There's no, there's nothing combative about it. Then Jonathan says, I appreciate all the info. He got two likes, one from me and one from uh, Stuart. Then I said... Jonathan, when you join the group, uh, so Jonathan did actually swear. He, he used the F word. He's getting a bit excited. I reminded him, and it wasn't a threat. It's a warning because there's 20 admins or something, and when you swear, it comes up as a keyword alert, and they get a, they get a notification saying, you know, whatever, and you click on that, and you see the person, and it's up to them how they deal with it. If they want to waste time and message someone, say, hey, can you edit that? Depending who it is, whatever, you know, they might and what mood they're in. Sometimes you just can't be bothered, mate. It's quality, not quantity, you know. If you, you know, people, maybe they can't be bothered with it. So I was just saying, I, I could have just deleted him, but I'm, it wasn't a threat to say, you're wrong and I'm right, and if you don't change what you say, I'm getting rid of you. None of that. There's no funny business power trip. You can say what you want as long as the facts are correct, and we're going to slowly get through that, and that's what we're doing now. Um... So anyway, here we go. When you join the group, so I wrote, Jonathan, when you join the group, you agreed not to swear. Stuart's information is wrong and needs to be corrected. 
Using the AOB must be match marketing line, which is incorrect. You're sharing information that compressing a spring when fitting to a strut changes the rate, which is also incorrect. Now, the way I wrote that, maybe someone got confused. Obviously, it's not Jonathan giving the information. Anyway, Jonathan then wrote, apologies on the swearing, but this conversation seems a little passive aggressive. Okay, so it can seem however you like. Um, there's no aggression. There's maybe, it, there's a firm question, uh, line of questioning, like a police interview. No, not really. There is a firm line of questioning, trying to get the truth, truth out. Same as I suppose, is it an interrogation? Maybe it's an interrogation by the police. No, it's, it's, but it's, I suppose it's a bit like that. So you gotta be careful how you take it. It's just words, it's questions. Um, and if it's passive, that's because you know, I'm all pretty relaxed about it, but we do need to correct it. So it might seem like that, no worries, okay. Jonathan says, I have no idea, I just asked the question, but I'm not an expert, but two people who appreciate, I appreciate the info from now appear to be battling, so please don't, I appreciate both opinions, and then everybody gets a bit, I'm a bit disappointed, I don't see a battle, I see a discussion, but anyway, moving on to the next comment, so I wrote, what, okay, there's no name on this one, but sometimes when you reply on Facebook, it puts a name there automatically and it might reply to the wrong person. That happens all the time where I press reply and it quotes, tags a person that, no, that's someone further up in the replies and it may have happened. And this may be the ones where I edited and took the name out. And I wrote, what you have written is wrong. Fitting a coil to a strut does not change anything. Adjusting the spring seat only adjusts the height, which it does. As you can see here, if we adjust that spring seat, up or down, if it was adjustable, it will adjust the height of the car, not anything on the spring contention. Not anything to do with the spring tension. The spring tension, once the car is on the ground, is all to do with the weight of the vehicle, the sprung weight, okay, we sort of discussed that, everything above the spring is sprung, and it, the weight of it on the spring is what adjusts the height, and the only way to change it is to put a longer spring, a firmer spring, or to raise or lower the seat height. So this is where there's heaps of, sorry about the drama, but I'm just trying to explain it for these guys. I will send them the link to the video, they can watch it or not. Um, but hopefully this information explains it for you guys so you really understand really well. Sorry about the bit of drama. It only happens every few, once every few months. And um, so anyway, Jonathan writes, I didn't write that. So that's where there was a bit of confusion where I think it may have tagged him as the writer. Obviously we know he didn't write that. So I've edited that post taking that the name Jonathan out. Um, then Jonathan wrote, Stuart did. I don't know Stuart, but appreciate all opinions and information. I did ask the original question. I totally understand. It's all good. I know Stuart asked that. A little bit of confusion. I'm sorry if Facebook put the wrong tag there and I didn't notice it. I edited it as soon as I noticed. My reply, Jonathan, it's not an argument. It's, it's explain it and everyone will understand. And that's what I've done. The spring sits on the strut seat. The weight of the vehicle is what compresses it. What happens in the spring compressor has got zero to do with the spring once it's in the car, which that's why we're here trying to demonstrate for everyone. And I know, as I said at the start, a lot of people knew already. Some people didn't, they know now. This is the best I can do to explain it. I'm prepared to have anyone here and explain it again or anyone explain it to me how I'm wrong. And I'm sure there's gonna be some people think that, um, that <laughs> what I'm demonstrating is wrong. Because it is a little bit difficult, so I understand it's a bit difficult to get your head around, but rest assured I've got my head around it. Um, here we go. We're getting towards the end of the comments. Jonathan says, Anthony, okay, but I don't understand anything you're talking about. Of course he doesn't. I, I understand that too. That's why I'm doing the video now, okay? I'm doing this for you, Jonathan. And um, what was his name? Scott. And anyone else that wants to read it, this is going to be posted as a reply. And I haven't really got time for this. And I haven't got time for it, but we need to, I don't want to do it. We need to correct the information. Otherwise, the wrong information's out there. Hope you understand. Anyway, reading his comment. I asked a simple question which seems to have caused conflict between you and Stuart. Well, it's not really a conflict. There is a wrong misinformation that needs to be corrected. Uh, it's not really a conflict. The easiest way would be for myself and Stuart to have a phone call, discuss it and try and explain. It could be hard on the phone. That's why it's easier if I can go spring seat, spring, weight of the vehicle, compressing the spring, so it doesn't matter what you do. And I think most of you have got it. There's no need to repeat it again. Like I repeated myself in, uh, in you know, a lot of these posts, these replies here. Anyway, 
Cause conflict with new insured. I just asked for a recommendation on a front suspension that can handle the load. Well, to answer your question, and I did, any spring, if you select the right one, can handle the load. Not this one. They're too small, too thin, and too short for the weight of the vehicle, which is why it's got the strut spacer up the top there, which I don't recommend. Then he says, please don't threaten to remove me from the group because I don't want conflict. I didn't threaten to remove you because you don't want conflict. I warned you of removal because you swore you used the F word. Anyway, you can come here, we can talk in the workshop and we can swear our heads off if you prefer. No problem, F this and F that, but there's no need for it. This channel is intended for the use of younger people, families and people that want to get themselves educated and we don't need any of the swearing along same with the pages and stuff like that as well because I don't want conflict between two knowledgeable members of this group I appreciate both your feedback and we'll just go to a local shop and ask them as this become a bit crazy for me so he's getting all stressed out and it's getting crazy he's going to go to a shop and get some more wrong advice probably you know what I mean oh, so what do you do so then I wrote Jonathan it's not a conflict between us. It's his understanding is wrong. And look, I don't want to sound arrogant about it, but it is wrong. Please explain to me how it's not wrong if it's right, okay? As I'm doing now, okay? That's what I'm doing, right? Um, hey, Jazz, shush! Dog's noisy, sorry. Anyway, she doesn't listen, so there was no point. It is his understanding is wrong. I'm trying to explain it for anyone who wants to understand. I'll do another video required if it's uh, sorry. I'll do another video if required, much easier, which is what we're doing now. Please, it'd be interesting to see who actually watches this video this far because you're probably going to understand most of the information and the drama, of course. Anyway. Then I wrote, it's not a threat. It was a friendly warning, keyword alert to 20 admins. They remove swearers. He could reply, right, gotcha, okay, no worries. But, you know, you know, you've really got to read things sometimes. I've said it before two or three times to understand what someone's trying to say, especially if they're talking to the phone and there's no, um, there's, no uh, com there's no punctuation is the word I was looking for. Anyway, then I wrote, I actually try to explain it. I spent all this time Facebook quoting wrong names and I put my arms up and laughing, you know trying to edit and fix the confusion. So I actually wrote that I was, you know, editing, fixing that because it did quote some of the wrong names there, the tag thing. I've explained it as clearly as I possibly can. One person is trying to say compressing the spring changes the rate and the other person has said, if you think about it, it's quite clear the bottom of the spring sits on the spring seat, right? height for each vehicle and what holds it to, yeah whatever anyway i've got a whole long explanation there top of the spring way down the vehicle hammer to the spring spring compressor installed in the coil has zero effect changing the rate on the spring as soon as they blah 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 there's no point going through it anyway um and it, it just goes on really long so it doesn't matter anyway uh you can go read it if you want then um then a short one, I said, look, the simple answer is any spring will hold the weight. You just need to select the right spring and length to obtain the height you want. It doesn't matter if it's Dominson's or King Springs, right? So whatever. He says, Anthony Pranophobia, I did not realise Oz Proto Crew was your job. I thought it was open forum for people to chat. Well, I thought that's what we were doing. Anyway, it didn't need to get elevated. We were just chatting. People just need to keep replying and we'll get to the bottom of it. But I'll keep reading and you'll see what happened appreciate your valid information as always just feel everyone should have a voice absolutely they do all day every day posts go up people have got a voice and i generally stay out of it because it's opinions and opinions everyone's got one they're like belly buttons it doesn't matter i only put stick to the facts factual information and i'm only going to answer if i've got a factual accurate answer if that is not the case then i am now advised how the page works have a good weekend <laughs> no that's not it at all man there's no need to go there Okay, then I replied, Jonathan, everyone can have a voice, but wrong information needs to be corrected. It's a matter of opinion. In this case, it's right and wrong. I'd like to help you and uh, you and Stuart, but you need to be open to it. So I'm actually saying it. I'm just trying to help you. Anyway, then I also replied, yes, Oz Proto Crew is part of my job. I'm um, quite experienced with Prado. has been supplying fitting for many years. Now I educate the public and trade, which I do. We just can't leave wrong info there. It's kind of like a duty of care to the members, really. Um, I did start the group after all, so I think I've got that responsibility to 
try and correct these things where they matter. And of course, doing it nicely, there's no threats, there's no violence, there's no swear words, there's no anything personal attacks or anything like it. So there's no need to go there. Anyway, I wrote, you can choose to do whatever you wish. My job is helping the owners understand that's why I do videos, much easier to demonstrate. Stu's gone quiet a while ago. He might be thinking about it. I did also have a suspicion he might have pulled the pin and left because that's what happens sometimes. People just give up. Um, it's unfortunately felt that way. I do feel for him on one hand, but I look at it the other way. You kind of just got to harden up a bit. Just look at the information, try and accept it, answer the questions as I've done. I try to put myself in his position and understand, you know, what he's trying to say and it was just incorrect anyway Jonathan says no he messaged me via PM he left the group as he felt harassed so he felt harassed uh, unfortunately I didn't think I was harassing him anyway uh, he felt harassed for giving his opinion he wasn't giving his opinion right the opinion part of it was an opinion the match set thing that was an opinion um, but his opinion it's not an opinion it's it's fact remember we talked about it at the start it's not a matter of opinion it's a matter of fact at the moment Perhaps try not to be so combative with other members. Totally take that on board, absolutely. I thought I was already doing that because this, as I said, it happens every now and then. Maybe every six months you get someone that you can't discuss things with them. You know, some people are like that. They can't, some people, they can't take criticism at all whatsoever. Um, everyone's different. You never know how it's going to go. It wasn't even criticizing. It's trying to point out the fact and that that information was wrong. Okay, so sort of he couldn't take that anyway. Then Jonathan says, to be honest, I didn't appreciate you attacking me either. I still don't know where through that whole post I attacked him. And then he says, whether Facebook had gotten the names wrong or not. Well, if Facebook puts the wrong tag there, I didn't notice it. Um, I'll take more care next time. I'm sorry. No, uh, this is just me speaking now. Anyway, uh, I, however, find your excuse for your attack and getting the names wrong highly unlikely. So he doesn't believe what I say. Um, so, you know, there's no, I don't need to make things up and cover it up. I'm just telling you what happened. Anyway, getting it wrong, unlike, so he's basically saying he doesn't believe me. Unlikely, um, and I understand how it works very well. Perhaps it was just your mistake. Yeah, it was my mistake or Facebook and my mistake. Facebook's mistake and then my mistake in not checking up on Facebook. So, yes, I'll accept it as my mistake that I didn't check. The name was right before I pressed the go button and it was about four or five minutes later where I edited and took the name out before, you know, perhaps if I checked it before I press go, you, maybe things, but it was already going that way, you know, and then what happens, it starts going that way and it just keeps going further. You just need to stop, come back, hit the reset button and read it for what it is without any, there's no tone with it, if you know what I mean. It's just, you got to calm the farm a bit, you know. I don't know if people were getting worked up, but I wasn't. Um, Jonathan, perhaps you should change the name uh, oh, here he goes. Jonathan says to me, he's talking about the group, perhaps you should change the name to Ask Anthony Prado for me. We can all start a new group. This, and now, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, it is Ask Anthony Prado for because people come and ask a lot of questions, but it's Ask Everyone because there's a lot of <coughs> general information and different experiences, and that's what it's all about, okay? But if someone states that a tyre is a battery and a battery is a tyre, we're going to correct it. Now, that's a fairly obvious one that's not going to happen, but this is just like it. Wrong information needs to be corrected. I hope you can understand that, Jonathan. Um, so I wrote, I, yeah, I bet he managed to Look, he just put wrong information. Um, he was questioned. It was a discussion. We're talking about it, and it was getting nowhere. Nobody learned anything. Anyway, Enough drama, guys. Enough drama for now. I reckon, um, and I wrote at the end, the last post on that thread is, sorry, this is me, sorry you feel this way. I can only see persistence. No harsh words were used. So, look, um, I do sort of sorry, but it's also, you need to harden up a bit. Come on, you know, like, it's just wrong information we're trying to correct. It's just questions, mate. Is people a bit soft or what? If I had a bit of a sook up and left like that, they'd go, oh, you know, you need to drink some concrete, you know, so... Anyway, let's see if we can bring this vehicle down, right, and watch the weight of the vehicle compress the spring. So one person would say that this spring is set at its spring rate because it's compressed between that length there, right? So I would like to demonstrate how quite obviously, do I need to demonstrate? Let's just do it anyway, right? So bada bing, 
All right, here we go, right? So I'm gonna angle up the camera a little bit and try and get the length of the strut in there as it hits the ground. Did you see that? Compress more? You wanna see it again, we'll go back up. Right, you can see it opened up as it decompressed. Right, what you've done on the spring compressor, fitting it in the strut is temporary. And uh, when you lower it again, you know, you can see the weight of the vehicle is what loads up the spring. Nothing else. Oop. Right. It's just one of those, that's a butter bing, butter boom, guys. I hope you... Hope everyone understands. I'm sorry to anyone if you took things the wrong way. It's just words and questions and information, trying to get the right information out there. Um, anyone that's watched the whole thing, I'm open to uh, the feedback in the comments there. If you on Oz Prado Crew and you want to have a read, whatever, you know, I did the best I could. I didn't mean to be in any way combative or anything like that, and I read through it, and I, I don't think it is. It is a firm line of questioning, so... Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I think people just need to maybe harden up a little bit. Now, let's talk about this suspension here for a minute. Let's give you a little bonus for those people that waited till the end. You see what's going on there? Let's have a look at that. Look at the angles of those aftermarket. Massive. those bushes let's have a look at these things let's have a look under this vehicle and uh, give you a bit of feedback on what it might need as a little bonus right so here we go we got it up in the air let's have a look around this vehicle has done over 400,000 k's right a few small things this just needs a bit of a clamp just a bit of coolant and whatever done a uh, big front engine job injectors and stuff like that still needs a clean up you know a bit of the excess coolant overflows and then you end up with uh, a bit of uh, oil like that you know, some of the things you're going to see once you get over 400,000, this has had a radiator, so you're not going to see any issues there with that. Um, so with the aftermarket control arms and the too much travel because of the strut spaces, something else people want to, you know, discuss, argue, whatever, about strut spaces and, you know, what's the difference? Well, you know, this is the, this is the drama, right? I mean, you know, you've got quite an angle on the CVs and... Um, you can see that boot hitting there a little bit. You can see the bush in these conies. Mm -hmm. um, this is the only thing, these are things we can check while I've got my hands busy. I can't grab and check things. So we're gonna go through everything that I can check without, um, without using my hands, right? So looking around, I don't like the upper ball joint hitting the spring. Okay, so not cool. Don't like that. I don't like the spaces. I don't like the conies. I don't like the king springs. I don't like the little dent in the boot. There's a tiny little sweat there at the rack. We've showed you that before. Not worth worrying about yet. Just keep it on that level. Not sure if the drive shaft have been changed yet. They look fairly original. Got a bit of a sweat on them. I'd have to check with the owner. I can't remember. What about the control arms? Yeah, they've been done. You can see they've got the Super Pro uh, bushes there. I'm not going to say whether I like those or yet, yet or not. The jury's out. They look pretty good at the moment. Um, turbo looks good. I don't know that that's been changed. It may have. May, may, may not have. I know the transmission's been out. I don't know what happened with that. It's the only transmission I've ever seen on any Prado that's had work done. And the story was the guy that rebuilt it was amazed how good the clutches were. So I don't know if it's a matter of someone probably put wrong oil or set the wrong level and did some damage in some way. But it's the only one that I've ever known that has been worked on. Okay, so same thing over this side. You can see the ball joints rubbing on those cool springs there. Strut space is not exciting. Okay. Uh, brake pads. Looks like the pads and rotors have been... Oh, the pads are getting low, actually. Yeah, it's going to need pads again soon. Yeah, I'm not doing a service on this. I'm just doing this for you guys. I have plenty of mud and that, so we're going to get this one out pretty quickly because it's not clean. We don't 
work on vehicles that are covered in mud like that you don't bring the vehicle in covered in mud you need to clean it so this is going to be a real quick look over it's just a free bonus look over really anyway got the conies in the back again uh rear brakes looks like plenty of meat at the rear brakes got some airbags there plenty of meat on those pads looks like up is that that looks like just tire shine actually not a leak Nice big conies, they look pretty cool. Uh, we're going to check if there's air in the airbag. We've got the water tank up here behind the uh, fuel tank. It's pretty cool. Tyres looking pretty good. KM3s, I think they are, aren't they? Uh, anyway, whatever. Um, look at this, I mean, besides the cleanup. How good condition is it for over 400,000 k's? It doesn't look much different to any that have done one, two, or 300,000 guys, you know? As I said, the usual things, bushes, front bearings, big front engine job, injector jobs, transmissions don't normally need doing. Like I said, that's a very rare, it's the only one I know of. Um, look, I mean, you look at the leaks and deterioration, you know, with a good cleanup, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even sort of know you know, uh, what kilometres it's done, you know. Uh, mud. You get that. I don't mind a bit of mud. Just wash it when you're finished and wash it before you bring it into the Prada hospital, that fuel filter. You can see it gets regular changes. You know, pretty clean considering. Just needs a bit of a clean up. Not bad. Nothing really exciting to report whatsoever. Uh, push it out to a million Ks, I say. Uh, bushes are good. Not sure what else there is. So my biggest things I don't like is yeah, just the all the geometry of the suspension setup kind of thing with the um, with the strut spaces are the main cause of the problem. And some people understand that straight away. Not going to try and explain that in this video because this one's been long enough, right? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you got something out of that, hopefully that helps with our communication between us and the explanation of these coil springs and fitting them into struts, how it doesn't make any difference to the rate of the spring whatsoever. The only time it would is if the spring was so long and hard that when you dropped the vehicle on the ground, it stayed just like that and it didn't move, then you'd be talking something. And we know that doesn't happen. Ideally, the vehicle, the spring should come down and compress at least, uh, you know, the height it should drop. You need at least kind of ideally about 100 mil of down travel if you can. Some vehicles are going to end up a bit less if you go too high and you are restricted and that's why some people sort of start going into changing other components around here which makes it unreliable and causes other problems. That's why you keep it simple. Keep it to about a 40 mil lift at the front. A little bit extra travel and I'm just going to mention it. The Dobinson stuff, it's got the perfect open, open lengths. Uh, it just works really well. That's why we like it. Very reliable. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, turn that bell on. And a butter boom, butter bing. Just stick with our YouTube videos, I think. And no more drama. See ya.